Good evening. Not only to those who are here, but to those who are in their homes participating in this Holy Mass. You know, the gospel that we have just heard, the Annunciation of the Angel Mary, is a net when we pray the Angelus three times daily. Of course, when we are not in the Easter season. We contemplate it when we recite the first joyful mystery. And it has been the subject of artists with famous artists like Filippo Lippi, Fra Angelico of the Church. And if we look at it, the plot of our narrative is very, very simple. The angel Gabriel goes to Mary, presents as if you were not a Salesian. For the others, what if you were not here in Don Bosco? What if you did not be here? And once again, to the Salesians, was there a point in your life when you decided to leave your life, maybe as an aspirant or maybe as a young Salesian? What if you did? Yes, what if? There are a lot of what-ifs in life. And we call these futurables. For more information, the concurrence of God. But this evening, we are challenged by a question, not only by any what-if. We are challenged by this question. What if Mary said no? Have you ever thought of that? What if Mary said no? Was it possible that Mary could have said no? No. And we find two clues in what we this evening. One, Mary was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Greeting pa lang yun, no? And she was already troubled. Two, how can this be since I have no relations with a man? And beyond these there could have been other questions. Hindi lang siguro ito, no? Maybe she was asked to cope up with the fact that I have other plans. How will Joseph accept this situation? Implications of being the mother of the Son of God. What if something wrong happened? Am I worthy to take this responsibility? Or something even more basic? Will I be capable of taking this? Did Mary understand the greatness of the responsibility that was given to her? A 14-year-old girl. All of us are older than that. One who is betrothed to whom she would be depending. No as an option may be plausible and sound. As are the times when we bargain at the responsibility given to us because we do not think of ourselves capable of coming up. And then, a greater question, why would God entrust such a responsibility to somebody so young, to an adolescent who may not have experienced the tough realities of life? Why not to a more mature woman? And to these questions, we have no answers. But God has prepared that moment. The angel presented to the young girl God's plan. It is either a yes or a no. Parang got talent, no? It's either a yes or a no. Mary was greatly troubled. And she said, how can this be since I have no relations with a man? We cannot fault Mary for being greatly troubled. At the words of the angel, for to be full of grace was something beyond the ordinary. However, the anxiety of Mary was one that sought an explanation to the meaning behind the greeting of the angel. The coming of the angel Gabriel happens at a situation that would be difficult to alter, one that seemed non negotiable. Why? Mary was already betrothed to Joseph. They definitely had their own plans. After her initial apprehension at the greeting of the angel, she listened to him, 
as, she, as he spoke words that she never imagined she would hear. She has found favor with God. She will conceive and bear a son. She shall call her son Jesus. The son will be great, will be called son of the Most High, will be king of David, will reign in the house of Jacob forever, will have an everlasting kingdom. And a 14-year-old girl would hear those who could take in these words in tranquility. It was difficult to comprehend. Let me be personal for a while. I'm uh, very fortunate, Father Monchit, because today is Throwback Thursday. And I wish to go back to May 20, 1992. Where were you on that day? Maybe some of you have not been born on that day yet. May 20, 1992. Yesterday was May 20. And so it was about, it was 28 years ago. It was the day our batch began our novitiate year. And I think a number of you will begin your novitiate year this year. Well, anyway, May 20, 1992. The morning was a breeze. Holy Mass. We were admitted as novices in Granada, Bacolod City, when, it was, when the novitiate was still there. Wow, the beginning of religious life. Salesians with just the initials SDB lacking. The day when I was supposed to be at the peak of happiness became one when a deluge of doubts came. Confused. My words could have been the following. At ngayon, di pa rin alam kung ba't tayo nandito. Pwede bang itigil muna ang pag mundo? Ewan ko at ewan natin, sinong may pakana? Of course, you know that these are lyrics of a song that you, you're familiar with. But you know, the sentiments are similar. The difficulty to comprehend what is in store the lack of certitude, the tentativeness, the doubts. Why am I here? Can we just stop time? Who is the author of all this? Dear friends, have you asked questions before? And such thoughts came to me as up and down the basketball court we walked, praying the rosary in the evening. But confusion and chaos, I looked up at the cloudless sky and searched for any sign that would comfort me. Oh, there were a lot of stars here, but chaos. I, who always knew how to identify all these constellations, could not find any form until towards the end of our I saw the cross, the Southern Cross. This is what consoled me. The cross, suffering, burden, yes, maybe. Just like the heart in the heart, happy, holy. But there was Jesus found in the context of praying the rosary. And for that, evening, for that day, for my novitiate, that was enough for me. It has fixed the chaos. It has put order to the confusion. But you know, dear friends, resolutions like this are not the end of our story. There were, of course, others like that along my journey. And there would be similar moments, even more difficult ones. And for all of us, when these do come, in these cases, what do we tell the Lord? Yes or no? And let's go back to the question. Could Mary have said no? This again, you may ask our brothers preparing for the De Universa. They would cite Banyas, 
or Molina? Yes, she would choose yes, surely, because she should prevail. But in the end, she argue to save freedom. Mary was free to say yes or no. So could Mary have said no? Yeah, that was possible. And so, that moment of the Annunciation, he hung in a balance, waiting for Mary's answer. Maybe even the father was waiting. What if Mary said no? I remember that our teacher in world history, when I was in fourth year high school, year 88-89, in Don Bosco Junior 8, itago na lang natin sa pangalang Father Jerry Batad, no? Everything had been prepared for centuries, that moment to come. Even the Immaculate Conception was a preparation for that. And God relied on a young girl for His Son to come to the world. And if you know, as Simon Cowell would say, then it's a no. Another preparation would have to be made and the world would have to wait again. Parang pinaghandaan mo tapos hindi nangyari o so maghahanda at ulit tayo. But that was not the story. Mary said, yes. The scene that had begun with a grand salutation ended with a simple and humble response of obedience from Mary. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Over previous plans, she placed God's will. She looked at herself as God's maid servant. And before the master himself, she just could not say no. God chose the right girl, humble, obedient, and generous. She trusted him and loved him. Dear friends, God has called each one of us for a specific mission that may not be as earth-shaking or history-changing as the one given to Mary. But like her, we are invited by God to cooperate with His plans. As Mary was given the gifts and privileges that accompanied her vocation, we too are given the graces that we need in our ascent to God's invitation. May our response be like that of Mary, Simple, humble, obedient, and generous. I wish to end with a little story. There was once a wise woman traveling in the mountains. And as she was traveling, she found a precious stone in a stream. The next day, she met another traveler who was hungry. She opened her bag to share her food. And the hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked if she might give it to him. And without hesitation, she gave it to him. And so the traveler left rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew that that stone was worth enough to give him security for a life. But a few days later, he came back to the stone the woman who had given it to him. And he said, I've been thinking. I know how valuable the stone is, but I'm giving it back in the hope that you can give me something much more precious. I want you to give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. And the story ends with a quotation. Back to the what ifs. Siguro kung hindi salishan, hindi tayo salishan. Meron tayong uh, ano ano? Attorney Ramon Garcia Jr. No? At siguro public official pa, no? And maybe meron mga naging artista, no? Sina ano? Sina Jonas, mga ganon, no? 
Pero people will be asking, what within them that made them so generous? And that is the clue why we know Mary said yes. You know, the story that I told you exalts the value of giving. Nay more, the virtue of generosity. All these graces that we receive come from God, who is ever generous. He's never outdone in generosity. It is He who is within the heart of Mary who offered her life, her youth to be the mother of God, who served who was in need. Mary said yes because she loved. And it is God who is within her heart who is within the heart of people who give everything they have in order that others may live.